Hello everyone, welcome back to Dexin Cuts. So the IMO 2025 is finally here, and this year's contest is held at Sunshine Coast in Australia. Now we have a crazy selection of problems ahead of us. So without further ado, let us take a look at today's problem 1. So problem 1 is a combinatorics problem, and you may even consider it to be a combinatorial geometry problem. That is pretty insane for a problem 1. Now, the problem statement is a little bit confusing. So after doing the first reading, I will help you break down the problem statement. Do not worry. The problem statement is as follows. A line in the plane is called sunny. If it is not parallel to any of the x-axis, the y-axis, or the line x plus y equals 0. Let n greater than or equal to 3 be a given integer. Determine all non-negative integers k such that there exist n distinct lines in the plane, satisfying both of the following. For all positive integers a and b with a plus b less than or equal to n plus 1, the point a, b lies on at least one of the lines. And exactly k of the n lines are sunny. Now, if you are like me, after reading the problem the first time, I understood absolutely nothing. So do not worry if you are feeling the same. Let's digest the problem statement a little first. Okay, so n greater than equal to 3 is a given integer. So let's say n equals to 5 over here for my illustration. Firstly, let's look at all the points a, b with a plus b less than or equal to n plus 1. And a, b here are positive integers. What are all these points? These are basically points that lie in a right triangle like this. So if you see 1, 1 all the way to 5, 1, indeed all this satisfy a plus b less than or equal to 6. So again 1, 1 to 1, 5, same thing. 2, 1 to 2, 4, etc. etc. So that's why we get this triangle structure over here. And what we want are n distinct lines that basically cover all the dots. This is what this condition is saying. The points all lie on at least one of the lines. Over here, I have drawn five lines that cover the blue dot. Let's look at the second condition. Exactly k of the n lines are sunny. So the question is how many of these lines that I'm covering the blue dots with are sunny. What is sunny? So a line is sunny if it's not slope 0, slope infinity, or slope minus 1. So for example, the red lines here are not sunny because it's slope minus 1. The green lines are sunny. So in this cover uh, scenario, I have three sunny lines, which means k equals to 3 is a possible answer here for n equals 5. Because I have k such that there exist n lines such that my n lines cover and three of the lines are sunny. Okay, so to rephrase or to summarize what the question is saying, first, we find n lines that cover the points. And what are the possible number of sunny lines? So over here, five lines cover the points and three is a possible number of sunny lines. Is zero a possible number of sunny lines? Indeed it is. Because if I use all vertical lines, then all the lines here are not sunny. So k equals to 0 is possible. Now in fact, this construction tells you that k equals to 0 is a possible solution for every n. Because this construction can be easily generalized to every n. Now what you have noticed I've started doing unconsciously is to begin the exploration of the problem. And usually when you are tackling a problem like this, instead of jumping into the solution or trying to find a solution, it helps to do some exploration so that you can motivate and reach the solution more easily. So let's continue our exploration. Okay, we can show that k equals 0 works. Can we construct k equals to 1? Again, it's actually quite easy because we take the previous construction you notice that the last line over here, I can actually rotate it to any other angle that is not horizontal, vertical, or slope minus 1. Then it will become a sunny line. So for every n, we can again 
construct a covering such that we use one sunny line. Okay, how about k equals 2, k equals 3 as well? So you might try and you know, find construction. What are the possible values of k? At this stage, it might be easier to first start with n equals to 3 and then see can we get k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3. So 0 and 1 already done. Can we get k equals 2? Can we get k equals 3? Well, I've spoiled the answer for you partially here, but actually if you try out yourself, it's also not difficult to come up with a construction with three sunny lines that covers the points. And with this base construction, you can actually expand the construction to higher values of n. So because you basically use that construction in the bottom left corner, and for all the remaining dots, they all lie on slope minus 1. So you can extend that construction by adding all these non-sunny lines here. So k equals 3 is possible for every n. And at this juncture of the exploration, you might be getting bored and be like, okay, maybe it's time to try and get towards a actual solution or proof. Now, let's look at two diagrams that will motivate the solution. Remember this construction that we have earlier. If you stare at it hard enough, you'll notice something interesting. You can actually remove this line and all the dots on it, and you will get a valid covering for the case n equals to 4. The number of sunny lines didn't change. So from the valid construction with one sunny line for n equals 5, I've gotten a valid construction for n equals 4 with again one sunny line. Let's look at another of our construction that we have done. This time we have a slope minus 1 line over here that we can remove together with all the dots on it to get a valid covering for the case n equals to 4. And the number of sunny lines didn't change. So from my valid construction, Using three sunny lines, I get another valid construction for a smaller n case with the same three sunny lines. That seems to suggest that there might be a solution with induction or a solution where I start with n and then I reduce it to n minus 1 and keep reducing it to the base case n equals to 3. And this is indeed the key idea behind the solution. So let's take a look at the official solution finally. Motivated by what we have saw, what we are going to do is consider a valid covering for the case n greater than or equal to 4 with n lines. I start with greater or equal to 4 because I'm going to reduce by 1. Okay, to redo my reduction, I must prove this claim. I'm going to claim that one of the lines in a valid covering must be x equals 1, y equals 1, or this outermost slope minus 1 line over here, x plus 1 equals n plus 1. So let's prove this claim. We are going to prove by contradiction, so suppose this is not true. Now the fact that the x equals to 1 line is not present means that no two points with x coordinate 1 share the same covering line. Because if they do share a covering line, then that covering line will have been a vertical line, which is the x equals 1 line. Now, there are n points, and my set of covering lines is only n lines. This means that my covering lines must be bijective with the points with x coordinate 1. Exactly one line passes through each of these points, Moreover, the lines are distinct. Okay, that's very good. We can repeat the same argument for the y equals to 1 points and so on. So what we learn is current lines is bijective with the points over here. The current lines is also bijective with the points over here. And the current lines is also bijective with the points over here. That sounds very fishy and to point out the specifics of why we get contradiction, we just need to look at any of the non-corner point uh, over here. 
So let's say we look at the red point. Now, the covering line that passes through it is a certain line L, right? The covering lines are all in bijection with points in A. So L must also pass through one of the points in A. Can it be this point over here at the corner? No, because lines are in bijection with the points in this set. And since L passes through this non corner point, it cannot pass through this point. So L must pass through one of these other points here. Same thing, L must pass through one of these points inside B. Okay, if we were to pick not this common option, but one of these options, and therefore one of these other options as well, how can L pass through one of these options and one of these options? It cannot be the case. A point inside here, here, and here would form a triangle. Basically, you are picking uh, points on edges of a triangle that is not the vertices. You will form another triangle with positive area. It cannot be a line, right? So the only option you have is that L actually passes through this point in A and this point in B. Well, sounds like there's no contradiction so far. But this is only one option. It shows that there's only one valid option and there are at least two non-corner points for n greater than or equal to 4. So if we look at another non-corner point like this one, by the same argument, it must be that the line that passes through it passes through this point. But then this contradicts bijectivity. Because in A, the covering lines are in bijection. You cannot have two different lines pass through this point. So I hope that is uh, clear. It's a bit tricky, but that is the hardest part of the proof. And once we have proven this claim, then we simply remove that particular line, x equals 1 or y equals 1, or the outermost uh, diagonal line, and the points on it, we actually get then a valid covering for the case n minus 1 with the same number of sunny lines. This tells us that if a number of sunny lines is possible for n, it must also be possible for n minus 1. So continuing this downwards all the way to the case n equals 3, we ask ourselves, what are valid number of sunny lines for n equals 3? So we already saw construction for k equals 0, k equals 1, and k equals 3. It remains to check how about k equals 2, is it possible? Here we can use back the very similar argument. Basically, if we have the y equals 1 line, for example, in the cover, then can we cover the other three points with two sunny lines? No, you can very quickly check and see that that's not possible. Same thing for the y equals 1 line and the outermost diagonal line. So in the scenario then that we do not have any of these three lines, the same bidirectional argument applies. And in this case, the line that passes through this must pass through this, the, the line that passes through this must pass through this, and the line that passes through this must pass through this, which gives us the k equals 3 construction that we saw earlier. So I leave you to uh, convince yourself of the details, but the upshot is that k equals 2 is not possible. So rounding back to our downward induction uh, statement over here, we earlier saw that for any n, possible k is a subset of the possible case for n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way to the possible case for n equals 3, which are 0, 1, and 3. So for any n, possible k is a subset of 0, 1, 3, but we have just saw the constructions when we are presenting the motivation earlier on to show that k equals 0, 1, and 3 is possible for every n. Well, so this concludes problem 1. I will say that it is indeed easier than what you typically expect of a problem 2, but it is quite difficult for a typical problem 1, especially in recent years. 
what do you think of this year's problem one? Do you like that it's actually a combinatorial geometry problem? Well, let me know your comments in the comment section below and stay tuned for the remaining IMO2025 problems.